I've been writing this book, you know, and it's sort of painfully true stories from my life. And so I've been calling some people who, who I grew up with to kind of verify some of the stories. And I called this girl who I had a big crush on in seventh grade named Lisa Bazzetti. And she was way out of my league, you know, but I, I could make her laugh, you know. She had to talk to me on the phone every night thanks to alphabetical order uh, to talk about homework. And one time I said something that made her laugh. And I was like, this is good, like I gotta do that more. And then one time I said something that made her laugh and she was laughing so hard and she goes, Mike, you gotta stop. I'm gonna pee myself. And I was like, wow. That was the closest I had ever come to a vagina. So I spent the next 15 years trying to get Lisa Bazzetti to pee, and that's how I ended up here uh, on stage. And that's how we all ended up here, in a sense. Seventh grade was a really hard year because it was that year where people started making out with each other, and I was just bewildered by this. I remember just being like, people we know? are making out with other people we know? But how? You know, it just seems like this alien ritual where these two aliens kind of attach orifices all of a sudden. I was just like, I am not doing that. And collectively, all the girls in my class were like, that is fine. <laughs> You're not on the list. <laughs> but then, you know, it started to kind of split the class up into two distinct groups, kind of the, the make-out club and the non-make-out club. I mean, these were informal organizations. Of course, <laughs> that would be very sad. Uh, I call this meeting of the non-make-out club to order. First order of business, Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> second order of business, cures for acne. <laughs> Third order of business, why doesn't anyone like us? Uh, Meeting adjourned. Uh, no, it, it was a tough group to be a part of because we, our numbers were dwindling and we were losing good guys by the day. And I feared <laughs> that soon I would be the lone member of the non-makeout club. And so I was like, I gotta get into the makeout club. But the, I didn't have any real candidates, you know? Like, I, I had a big crush on Lisa Bazzetti, and so one time I built up the courage to ask her to go to the carnival with me. And she said yes, and I was really excited. In my mind, I, I had this uh, fantasy, like, you know, it, like, it'll be like a, in a romantic comedy montage, you know, like, uh, we'll go to the, to the thing, and then we'll, I'll win her a giant stuffed bear, and uh, we'll go on some rides, and then we'll make out, and it'll take like a minute and a half, you know? And... <laughs> We went to the carnival, I went, we went on a ride called the Scrambler. I don't know if you have the Scrambler here in Canada. I imagine you do. It travels on a truck, you know. It's a very mobile scrambling unit. The, the premise is that you sit on a two-person pod with the person you're in love with, and then that pod goes in a circle, which is part of an even larger circle, which is part of an even grander circle. As I understand it, it was originally designed as a medical device for constipated patients. It was called the Schitzer Pantserator, and it was very successful, and then it was co-opted by the Carnival Workers of America, uh, Quoa, I don't know if you're familiar, and they said, we like it, but we feel like the name is something of a turnoff. And then one guy goes, what about the I think I'm going to diorator? And they're like, that's good, because it gets across the essence of how you feel when you're on the machine, plus it has the added wordplay with diarrhea, which is a nice homage to the original intention of the machine. But we still feel like the name is something of a turnoff. And then one guy goes, what about the scrambler? And they're like, nailed it. But who? Is gonna be in charge of this dangerous piece of equipment. And this one guy goes, well, I have a nephew who's 16 years old and smokes pot 24 hours a day. I feel like he might be available. And they're like, he sounds amazing. We don't even need to interview him. He sounds completely qualified. And so I sit down on the scrambler, and I know from the moment they put the bar seat belt down that I am gonna throw up for sure. Um, 
The bar seatbelt is not a very reassuring piece of safety equipment. That's not a Ralph Nader approved item. That's never saved anyone's life. I think the only thing it's ever done is in a scrambler accident, it's just kind of held someone's esophagus down to the pavement, making sure that they are dead and that they cannot talk about the scrambler accident. And, but I'm still hopeful, you know? I'm like, you know, Lisa's snuggling up to me and, and I'm thinking, you know, maybe this is where it's all gonna happen, you know? This is very special. But I think that when you're 12 years old, you just don't understand certain things about the digestive system. Like you don't know that you shouldn't eat popcorn and peanuts and funnel cake and cotton candy and then go on a machine that scrambles your body. <laughs> cotton candy being the most insane of these items. It's basically like saying, we're gonna take sugar, which everyone knows is bad, but then we'll dress it up like insulation. And I'm like, I'm not sure what the selling point is there. Is it the sugar or the insulation? I'm like, we already sold it. So, uh, so I know they put the bar seat belt down, I'm gonna throw up. And I even say to the, to the 16 year old stoner, I'm like, hey, actually, and then he was gone. Apparently he doesn't enjoy the second halves of sentences and <laughs> So then I'm scrambling and, and I'm thinking, I need to come up with a plan of some kind. And my first plan was that I just wouldn't look at Lisa and I wouldn't look at any other people. So I'm like, don't look at Lisa, don't look at any other people. Don't look at Lisa, don't look at any other people. I need a new plan. And the new plan was that I needed to tell the scrambler operator that he needed to stop the ride. But the mathematics of the scrambler are such that the window of opportunity in which one can communicate with the scrambler operator is a very limited window. So I'm like, I gotta tell the guy to stop the ride. I gotta tell the guy to stop the ride. I gotta tell the guy to stop the ride. Please stop the ride and then I'm back. The third time I said, please stop the, and then I started throwing up. And it was not unlike an oscillating lawn sprinkler. <laughs> Just popcorn and peanuts and insulation, really insulating the pavement with my homemade carnival salsa. And I did not look at Lisa, but I'm pretty sure she was staring at me. And we did not make out. I did not lose my uh, mouth virginity that evening. But I called Lisa, you know, like as an adult and everything. And I'm, I'm telling her this story and, and she's laughing, you know, and it's really exciting to have this moment where we're laughing. And, and I'm not sure, but I'd like to think that she peed herself. Thanks, Montreal. You know, right in their face, you know what I mean? All week, you know what I mean? It's so fun, man. But it's only one thing that bugs me when I talk to people all the time, man. You, you been talking to somebody, man, they spit in your face while they're talking, right? They see the spit and keep on talking. Like, hey, we both saw this come out your mouth. The United States of America is broke and has bad credit. White people panicking, black people like, we got this. <laughs> <laughs>